hello, how are you guys? I hope you're doing well. So all summer, uh, one of the biggest things that I was jumping up and down about and one of my biggest criticisms was of the organization Black Lives Matter. And a lot of that is because I saw the violence and I saw the destruction in my own neighborhood under the name, under, under the guise of Black Lives Matter. The organization, by the way, not the sentiment. I always have to say that every time I make one of these videos, of course, we all believe, especially myself, in the sentiment of Black Lives Matter. Of course, I believe in everybody's right to come out and protest, whether I agree with you or not, because I love this country and I love the freedoms we have. And one of those awesome freedoms is that we can go out and peacefully assemble. We can protest. We can criticize our, 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 our government. So whether I uh, agree with your reasoning or not, I will always fight for your right to be able to do that uh, because I want that same right. And I'm an adult, so it doesn't bother me when people disagree with me and they speak out against it publicly. I will criticize it, but it doesn't bother me. I, I will fight for your right to be able to do that. Um, but I have been very open about my criticism of um, the organization Black Lives Matter. Um, I have been speaking out against a lot of the violence that has been happening and a lot of these riots and protests over the summer. I think the number is something like 72% of the cities that had BLM um, demonstrations, it broke out in violence. Uh, you had at least 25 people that have uh, been killed in these riots at the hand or in these demonstrations and riots at the hand of other demonstrators one was a retired police officer David Dorn another was an eight-year-old little girl named Sequoia Turner that happened in Atlanta and all summer I was completely gaslit by my government not all my government but some of my government completely gaslit by by my government corrupt politicians friends family, everyone saying that I needed to get on board and that if I criticized anything, I was, you know, a racist or this and that or whatever. Well, now the tables are turning and I'll tell you what, I honestly think that if people don't get on board, they are going to hand, if Trump does run in 2024, they are going to hand him the presidency on a silver platter, not to mention everything else that's going on in DC. But for that reason, uh, the tide is, is turning, my friend, on Black Lives Matter, the organization, and people are starting to wake up to what an absolute fraud the organization is. Um, and I was critical of it from the very beginning, uh, very beginning when they started with uh, the, the chant, uh, hands up, don't shoot, because we knew that in fact didn't happen. Um, pigs fried like bacon or whatever they were saying. Anyway, let's look at what's happening with Black Lives Matter right now. Uh, first of all, the the one of the co-founders, Patrice Con Coolers, um, she has said from the very beginning there is video footage of of her saying this i'll play it for you in just a second uh that she does in fact have a political agenda uh she is a trained marxist she is a trained marxist excuse me and uh, she's been saying this from the very beginning and if you were to look at the message on black lives matter which they had to take down because they got so much criticism for it. If I can find it, I'll put it up for you right now. But if you look at the mis mission statement, basically, and what they believe uh, in the organization Black Lives Matter on their own website, it says that they want to disrupt the nuclear family, uh, which comes straight out of the Communist Manifesto, if you read that. And Patrice Con Colors, even there is a new video of her that surfaced where she is talking about the Red Book. So I'm going to play you uh, the Marxist clip and then I'm going to play you that clip and then I have some really interesting stuff that I want to go through for you that's come out within the past few weeks. Um, I also think that it might, um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. I was at the art publications table today and I was speaking to this uh, young person from Arizona who's trying to fight uh, SB 1070. And I was, he, he, he grabbed a book and he said, it's like Mao's Red Book. <laughs> and I was like, man, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and it was just really cool to hear him make that connection. I was like, how about you buy like, 10 to 15 of these books and you all have like a youth like 
organizing group where you talk about it and you really try to engage this. And we can just kind of, we need to build off of this. So again, that was Patrice Khan Coolers the one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter and keep in mind they have gotten over 90 million dollars in donations and nobody knows where those donations have have went um there were I think up to like two billion dollars in property damage from all of the rioting that happened over the summer and I can't even tell you how many videos I saw uh, from people who happen to be black that are crying in the middle of the street and screaming uh, and looking at the destruction and the ruin of their businesses that they built saying I thought black lives matter they didn't get any of that money so this organization while simultaneously telling us to go to go spend money at black businesses we're burning down black businesses and we're not giving any of them that money there are uh Sequoia Turner was a young black girl the girl I mentioned earlier who was shot and killed by a demonstrator in and the Rayshard Brooks demonstration in Atlanta at the hands of another demonstrator did her family ever see any money did um did uh Patrice Con Colors or anyone else come out and say hey you know guys go out and demonstrate but this violence has got to stop no they didn't they were silent about it and in fact, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. In fact, it was Democratic politicians who said, who, who gaslit Republicans that were calling this out, calling it a Republican talking point. And going back to the $90 million in donations, none of that money has gone to any communities. I have not seen um, <clears throat> charities pop up. I haven't seen community centers pop up, after school programs. Also recently had Brianna Taylor's mom and a few other mothers come out and say, you are making money off the name of my child and I haven't seen any of that. You are using my deceased child's name to make money and you haven't reached out to us. We haven't received a thing from you. So that's been happening. And then just recently Patrice Khan Coolers came under fire again because she went on a million dollar home real estate buying spree. She bought three homes. Her last one was $1.4 million in Topanga, California, which let me just tell you, Topanga is too gentrified even for me and that's where she is buying homes and people are saying how are you affording this why are you going out and spending all of this money I thought you were fighting for underserved communities and her 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 answer to that was you know I I'm allowed to buy homes for myself I made this money on speaking engagements and things like that so there was that and just recently we found out that Patrice Khan Coolers has in fact resigned uh, from her role in Black Lives Matter, the organization. And her reason for resigning was that this was already planned. This had nothing to do with the controversy. I believe one of my favorite headlines was uh, Patrice Kahn Coolers uh, resigns amid controversy and says it's not because controversy. So she's saying that she is uh, has some book deals and she's going to focus on that and that's why she's resigning. It has nothing to do with any of this controversy or anything like that. And my thinking is, well, that just proves my thought even more that you are a fraud and you were never about helping any community why would you be resigning to write books when none of that money or no help nothing good has come from any of these protests any of these riots any of these demonstrations except destruction um, that to me just proves that this was never about the movement and that this was in fact about her because now she has a book deal and she's going to go and write books instead of helping the communities that she says that she started this to help out in the first place so to me that's just even more evidence that she is a big old fraud with a capital f actually another point that someone recently brought up to me about blm is the fact that if you look at the trending patterns on things like twitter um the last time that Black Lives Matter was trending on Twitter was 2016. So they seem to always gain popularity around election cycles. And to me, this was just a tool for the Democratic Party to get them in office. Well, now I think it's actually backfiring. And uh, I wanna look at a few more things so this came out in the New York Post. Actually, this was everywhere. It wasn't just the New York Post. That's just what I chose. BLM leader says he quit after learning the ugly truth about the group's priorities. So we'll go into what he says. This is, his name is Rashad 
Rashad Turner, and he started a Black Lives Matter. Rashad Turner, and he started a Black Lives Matter chapter in St. Paul, Minnesota. And he says, I believed the organization stood for exactly what the name implies. Black lives do matter. Of course, that's what we all thought. Um, and then he said, however, a year after a year on the inside, I learned that they had little concern for rebuilding black families. He said BLM even cared less about improving the quality of education for students in Minneapolis. And that was made clear to me when they denounced, when they publicly denounced charter schools alongside with the teachers union. I was an insider in Black Lives Matter and I learned the ugly truth. Uh, the moratorium on charter schools does not support rebuilding the black family, but it does create barriers to a better education for black children. I resigned from Black Lives Matter after a year and a half. It goes on to say, Turner said he first started the local BLM chapter under the assumption that the group would want to fight for black people from troubled backgrounds to get better educated and find success, just like he had. For example, uh, George Floyd Square in Minneapolis, when all of this started, and the interesting thing was, the thing about about George Floyd is this is the one thing Republicans and Democrats everyone was horrified by that video everyone was pretty much on the same page and then they just took it too far which is what they always do George Floyd Square uh, I recently read an article that businesses are pulling out of there because it's too dangerous and uh, I, I don't know if you saw there was a news reporter reporting live on the year anniversary of, of George Floyd uh, being killed and uh, shots were fired there was a drive-by shooting it's gotten ridiculously dangerous there and businesses don't even want to be there anymore here's another area that had a lot of unrest they're still having unrest portland oregon <clears throat> and portland was one of the places that trump uh criticized very heavily he sent national guard there to help clean it up it was very um there were riots. I think they had like over a hundred nights of rioting in a row and democratic leaders. And then the left-wing media were like, what are you talking about? There's no rioting. There's no anarchists. There's no, there's no unrest here. We're, it's perfectly fine. What are you talking about? Well, this just came out in the Washington Post just a few days ago. Uh, anarchists and an increase in violent crime hijacked Portland's social justice movement. Search on the edge of this city was built to hold thousands and on this drizzly day the pews of the uh of the mana house i think i'm saying it correctly i don't know were filled with hundreds of mourners scattered throughout the broad high ceiling chamber to comply with pandemic rules nearly all of them were black they had gathered to memorialize Lon Yoakum, 33, whose body lay in a clear casket on the front of the stage. The wounds on his face had been brushed over. A blue suit and white open collar shirt hid the rest of his scars from the daylight gunshots uh, that killed him in a pizza restaurant parking lot this month. Portland is a white city, overwhelmingly so. African Americans account for just 6% of the population, but it is black people such as Yoko, uh, Iron Union electrician that are dying in, a, in near historic rates and filling churches with grief. On May 12th, uh, Yoakum, a father of two young boys, became the city's 30th homicide victim this year. That is five times the number recorded during that same period in 2020, a frightening pace that could see more slayings here by the end of the year than the past four decades. That is not how the following year, the year following George Floyd's murder was supposed to end, but with, Gitch, uh, with Bishop Gary Tyson of the General Baptist Convention of the Northwest telling mourners, Yolan didn't die, he was killed, his life was taken. After months of social justice activism that made Portland a vivid, sometimes violent focal, port, focal point for a nation debating the same issues around policing, police accountability and reform, the movement has splintered into bickering groups at odds over tactics, goals, and overall direction for how to make the city safer, with the police force still at a debate at a debate at the debate's bitter center. The sharpening conflict between rising crime and efforts to reduce the size of police departments has played out across American West throughout this pandemic year. Now cities such as Portland, considered among the most ambitious and moving to reshape, we hear that all the time, uh, the police force has retrenched. So have Oakland, California, Berkeley, California, Los Angeles, and several, uh, several other influential cities on the issue. The, night, the nightly confrontations with police and federal agents deployed here by President Trump have been replaced by a kind of generational hopelessness, a tenuous sense of security, 
across an under police city and a return to old school style of gun violence reminiscent of a tit for tat cycle of deadly reprisals almost always young men of color through april the police reported 348 shootings more than double those recorded over the first first four months of last year so that is what all of this has led to we had unrest and violence in all of our streets calls to defund the police and then violence skyrocketed and who is paying the price more than anyone homicides in portland are up 800 percent that is insane all of those democrats all those city council members who voted for it who who you know yelled the slogan defund the police all of those activists those aren't the ones that are really suffering because of all of this these are the people that live in these communities so if you saw the video i did yesterday about memorial day so i'll bring it up again one of the most disturbing things that i saw when i was in washington dc a few weekends ago was you know i was just walking along the street i was right around the white house and a huge motorcade went by it wasn't biden it wasn't kamal i don't know who it was but it was clearly a very high profile politician I'm not sure if it was a Democrat or Republican, but it's about a 50-50 chance. And I just thought to myself, that could very well be, oh, anyway, so this huge motorcade comes by, like cops everywhere, the cops get there first, they block off the road, they're guarding everything. I mean, just cops everywhere guarding this motorcade. And that could very well be a Democrat politician. And, and all of their motorcades are like that, basically. They all have security details wherever they go. So they're getting on TV and they're telling you that they, they're, they're saying defund the police. They, they know very, very well how, how important police officers are. It has nothing to do with reform. It has nothing to do with change. It has everything to do with whatever is politically expedient to them at the time. Whatever they think is going to help their political career. That's all this is about. And I'm sitting there looking at those cops and I'm like, gosh, it's like, it's like abusive almost. Like these people demonize you and then want you to guard their motorcades. Like how... Like it's just evil. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. It's just what monsters. The same with a lot of these city council members. A lot of these city council members that voted to defund the police, um, especially in LA. It actually a few stories came out. They had. They would have private security details guarding their homes. Yet at the same time, they were they were saying defund the police, voting to defund the police because they know that even if police are defunded, even if our wait times are up, even if we have less police patrolling our streets, the police are still gonna be at their beck and call if they need them to guard their own homes. It's just awful. And uh, I think more and more people are waking up to this. They're seeing what a fraud this all is, and they are just handing all of this over they are ruining their own party anyway that that's all i have to say at this point it makes me really sad to see these stories um it's not cool it's not good it's like it's like you know society is just a sacrificial these people us you me like wh whoever lives in these areas that are defunding the police you're just a sacrificial lamb in this weird social experiment and it's sad and the, the you know the people that were yelling defund the police are not the people that are going to be reaping you know the the awful realities of this it's the people that live in these neighborhoods that are and uh anyway that's that's what i have for you right now let me know what you guys think about everything and i'll see you later bye